Joining us now in studio is Alessandro Bruno from North Africa Journal. This is quite a day. I mean, you were just describing it. What does this mean for the people of Italy that this happened? Well, this is one of the big events of the, pa of the past hundred years, politically speaking. I mean, the only thing I can think of that compares to this is the uh, end of the Mussolini regime on uh, 24th July of 1943. Now, wh why that comparison? I mean, that's a very strong comparison. Uh, he didn't declare war or anything like that. No, he didn't declare war on anyone uh, except perhaps the people of Italy, uh, and, uh, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a subtle way. Uh, but he marked the, the, the 90s and the past decade, really, even when he wasn't prime minister for the few years that he wasn't, he was still a strong influence. And, and he changed, really, the system forever. It's going to take a long time to readjust. Now, we're seeing these scenes in, in, in the streets of Rome where people are they're out, there, out there celebrating, uh, yes. rallying. Why is that? Well, um, now, uh, in the last year in particular, he, Berlusconi started to lose a lot of support, including from uh, his own uh, coalition. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, you know, we can speak about the beginning of the end, really, starts around... Uh, April of 2009, if we want to put a date on it. Um, this is when the revelations of a uh, sexual scandal involving a teenager uh, came out. And since then, the news media from around the world has been publishing a number of editorials to step down. He didn't. And gradually, uh, the erosion is, is, uh, included you know, members of the own, his own coalition. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm speaking particularly of this, the Speaker of the House, Gianfranco Fini, who took a number of people uh, with him. Do, and those were the most political elements in the group, mm -hmm. the people with mo the most political experience, because do, Berlusconi's experience is mostly business. Uh, does this have more to do with the sexual scandals, or does it have to do with the financial mess that they're in? Ultimately, it has to do with the financial mess. Uh, I mean, it begins with the sexual scandal, but the financial mess is what causes the, the final cracks in his own coalition. And as usual, you know, when you... Berlusconi set up a system of, you know, something, you know, like the, the, the Sun King in France in the 17th century, where of courtesans and people and lackeys. Now, as, you, as happens in those situations, the lackeys and courtesans are the first one to leave when the going gets tough. Mm -hmm. And uh, they start, the economic situation in Italy was terrible. Um, European Union was breathing on their back, the banks were breathing. And a number of other people started to uh, break from uh, Berlusconi's own wing. Some of the closest people of Berlusconi started to leave. Mm -hmm. if, if a house is on fire and yeah. you don't like the fire chief and you fire him, the house is still on fire. Who's in charge now? Well, this is the, the more positive thing to, from today. I, I look at it more uh, as a new beginning than, than the end. The, the person who will probably very likely take over and will be confirmed tomorrow is a man called Mario Monti. He's well known in the, to European uh, uh, leaders and institutions because he was for 10 years at the head of the Economic com Composition uh, Bureau in, in the European Union. Mm -hmm. He was very famous. They called him Super Mario <laughs> because he took on Microsoft in an antitrust case. Mm -hmm. So he's taken on big corporate interests from that side. But he's a university professor and very widely respected. He's a, you couldn't ha have a more striking contrast between the two figures. Yeah. A professor coming in, leaving in the, court, the, the courtier and the, the clown uh, today. Doesn't Super Mario have the toughest task in Italy now? Because now he's got to convince people, you know what, your, your lifestyle may have to change because of all this austerity that's going on. Well, he, uh, the austerity measures in Italy, in a way, have already begun. Uh, there's very high unemployment, particularly in, among youth. It's a very difficult situation. and. The, it's just that the austerity measures passed by someone like Mario Monti will look more serious. It won't be... Uh, Berlusconi would never be able to get away with it, not from his, the, because of his populist side, but also because he didn't have the credibility to, to approve such things. Mm -hmm. Italians would have protested much more. Now there is an air of at least we have to, uh, you know, uh, make some sacrifices, but we'll reconstruct, we'll rebuild. And actually, Italy has been best under governments of this type, they're so-called technical governments, when it, an unelected official comes in to clean up the house and then prepare the country to, to, for elections in the next probably year and a half. And we'll look forward to uh, whoever's going to take over. That could happen in the next day or so. As you mentioned, yeah. Alessandro uh, Bruno from North Africa Journal, thank you very much for thank joining you. us.